Bali is finally open, but is it a good time to come? So today, I want to share with you my time in Bali, how I was living there, my day-to-day -day life, where I was staying, the villa, the different areas, but also take you on some weekend trips to some absolutely amazing spots. So maybe you have seen already some of this material. I have stayed in Indonesia in total for like, I think it was over four months. And in today's video, I really want to give you a feeling of how it would be to maybe travel Bali, but maybe even a little bit more so live in Bali, be it for a month, be it for a few months. So I'm exactly going to break down how you can come to Bali. I'm going to do timestamps for this video so you can check out on the timeline, whatever it is you're interested. And before we dive into Bali, a word from today's video sponsor, Paysend. So, you know, when traveling, when being on the road, sometimes you want to send money, be it to a friend in a country that you meet or send money back home. And when it's in different currencies and you want to use a traditional bank, sometimes the fees are just horrendously high. So to summarize Paysend, it makes it easy and affordable to send money all over the world. It's a fixed fee, so there's no hidden cost. Bank level security, it's certified by Visa, MasterCard, so nothing to worry about. It's very easy to send money to over a hundred different countries. Countries. it's fast to set up you just download the app and actually I mean, let me just grab my phone here real quick so and then you type in which currency like the person you're sending it to wants to receive it in usually there's a very small fee but with the code Danny free so for three transactions it will be completely free of charge and you will get an even better exchange rate you know I have some stories like even when I was in Indonesia I came to Indonesia on let's say a six month business visa I'll talk about that later on as well and so one day this company is telling me like hey Danny can you transfer some uh, can you transfer this amount for the next month to us and i'm like okay twenty thousand rupiah da, 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 indonesian rupiah how am i gonna do that so i ended up we needed to go to a local bank to transfer the them this amount but luckily i have paysent and now by my side so a very useful service especially if you're on the road be it paying for different services or transferring money to any friends or family all over the world so in the description you will find the link to paysend together with my code which will allow you to have three transactions completely for free with a better exchange rate so check it out and well let's hop into bali okay, so we're gonna wreck out right now we live like around 10 minute drive from changu we're kind of like in the middle of the two busy areas So guys, we got into Changu, we're doing a bit of a stop over. So if you've never been to Bali, this is very likely the area where all the people you are like seeing on Instagram, on the stories, with the location text. It's a very nice area. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing crazy. The infrastructure is actually still very like tiny roads. Hi. Everybody was filming them. Thank you. So we made it out to the beach for the mandatory sunset. <laughs> that's what you have to do. Exactly. <laughs> Especially if you live in Changu, like they're gonna drag you out every day. That's what I remember from the previous years. So guys, Changu is crazy. You have so many dogs on the beach and it's yeah. mostly foreigners, right? Yes. Probably like 70% here in the area. And so how do you feel about Bali? Being back here, what do well, you think? It's very nice. We met here almost two years ago and now we come back to the same place. So I'm just gonna, you know, just so the background the conversations are over. Okay, guys, I would say we officially 
made it to, if you want to call something here the paradise of Bali, that probably would be it. Honestly, I've been in this part of Bali, I think, once or maybe twice before. We've been here together. Mm -hmm. Well, our and first trip together. That was our first ever trip together, guys. And honestly, I don't remember it to be as nice as it is. Because the only beach we went down to, many of the beaches in this area, you have to kind of like hike down a little bit. Yeah. This is one of the really nice beaches. It's next to the, what is the club back there? Do you remember it? It's around the Karma Beach Club. But you can also just come yourself down. You're like, you know, it's a public beach. Or maybe that part is private. However, you can make it on there. come to Bali now with visa on arrival. So to break that down real quick for you, if you're planning to come to Bali right now, for months and months you had to quarantine, be it five days, seven days, now that is all out of the way. There's still some requirements. So number one is you need to have an insurance that covers you for the 19. Uh, I will link the one that I used down below. It's safety wing, it's very easy and quick to set it up. Number two is you need to have a PCR test before you arrive and then you will take one on arrival so still a little bit annoying these tests they become more affordable and hopefully they will lift these restrictions in the coming months as well but this is the way it is right now so let's talk about the downsides of coming to bali right now which is you're not going to get the great deals anymore so while bali was still a little bit more closed off you could be living in a villa for a fraction of the price and i would say on that note let me tour you around a little bit oh uh, yeah where i was staying and the price i think now it probably is somewhat of a double that would be my guess, but I think I was paying less than 20 euro to live in that spot. Guys, we are in front of the house. Here we have the lovely parking space of the scooters. You're coming in nice and green and it's pretty much always super calm and peaceful. It's a shared space. I'm gonna break it down to you a little bit later. Guys, this is a little bit the entrance area. A lot of like little details, just like, again, the owners really take care of this place. Almost every day there's someone com coming. There's the gardener, there's the pool guy, there's the rooftop fixer. There's just like there's some, <laughs> a little bit renewal, but like for one day, like literally, it has been so peaceful living out here. So a little bit of an entrance area, a lot of greenery. Everything is absolutely natural, like a little bit of decoration, but mostly, you know, in the middle of the jungle. So we're coming in and that is the huge common living area where don't spend too much time out here but this is actually where you like see the whole place so you see the big pool sometimes when it's like raining like crazy that's when i like to jump into the water and you see this kind of like hot triangle rooftop so again big pool is actually like pretty deep down there bianca is not even daring to go in and overall you know just to wake up walk around around the pool just really gives you a lot let's go over here a little bit here a little bit of an area maybe have coffee Every day I read here. Good so, guys, then we're walking over, and when we first got here, honestly, we saw this place on Airbnb. We decided to stop by, and we, our expectations were fairly low. It's a nice listing, but it's not like it really it doesn't live up to what it is in reality. Yeah, I, I, honestly, yeah. like their photo doesn't do it justice. Yeah, because usually you see a place, you see the photos online, you arrive, and you're like, oh, whoa, like what is that? You know, like very often it's like it doesn't look like it's online because like hundreds of people live there. This is almost like the opposite. Online, it looks good, it looks nice, it looks okay. You arrive and you're like, wow, what, what is that? Like, that is crazy. This is the heart of the whole place. Like maybe after a week or something, we got a little bit comfortable, started to maybe watch movies here. And again, there is a guy living in that room, super nice guy. Everyone's like here, you know, the owners say we're a little bit like family because everyone's doing their thing. Everyone's minding their own business. Nobody, I think we are maybe the only people who hug the common areas maybe a little bit. Yes. But, um, yeah, first here's kind of like a bit of a lobby table, but sometimes I just like to sit down, do my work. <laughs> and here's and, the reception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this table is absolutely epic. You know, just have your lunch, have your meal. Usually if I work outside in the cafe or in a room because it has air conditioning, but sometimes still like open kitchen. Some people are like not sure about open kitchens because it can get a little bit warm, but if you have the ventilators and speaking about ventilators, guys, if you look up, check it out. This is absolutely crazy. Like the space that we have up there. So we've got this huge common space. Come a little bit further in with me. 
I mean, that place, honestly, no place that we stayed in Asia before I had such a humongous kitchen. This place is like for a proper like patchwork family for like 10 people. Huge American refrigerator where we store all our fruits from the market. That's a little area, so that's the other room. And here again, a nice little other chill area. If you sit here, your view on the villa again, super, super nice. Hang a little bit in the hanging sack. And so really a lot of different corners in the villa. So room number three, this is our space. I'm gonna show you tomorrow a little bit more of a lit, lit up situation, but huge ceilings. You probably hear it. So again, like it feels like a really large room. A lot of daylight is coming in and daylight is coming in from both directions. So big bed, big working table. You see it even with like two laptops. If you would want it, you can put on two chairs. So this is where a lot of time has been spent. So really, really livable. And what makes it that livable, I would say also is in many ways, this area here with the huge wardrobes, but storing absolutely everything out here. And as I said, daylight is coming in. Maybe you can go from that side. <laughs> Daylight is coming in from both directions. So during the day, if you keep both doors open, you really feel like the whole place is lit up. And honestly, when I walked into this room, like the entrance, I was like, yeah, it's nice. Then I saw the high ceilings. I'm like, wow, wow, that's really cool. Then I saw this area. I'm like, okay, it's like a proper little apartment. <laughs> Okay guys, it is right now the next day. Yesterday it was getting a bit dark, so I'm about to reveal to you how much we are paying for this accommodation. But also in the meantime, there was some people staying here. This is the bungalow right next to like the main house. So this is our room. This is the big living area. Let's talk about the price. It's 370 euro for one full month. Six million Indonesian rupiah. Or you could also say, how much is it, like $400, $400? Let me check it exactly for you. So $420 for one month for this whole space. As I've mentioned before, the space is shared. There's a really nice guy living here, but he is almost never there. Sometimes, at some point, some people moved into the bungalow. But overall, we live here now for over a month and that... So guys, we're right next door right now to our villa and I thought let's talk a little bit about, you know, people come a lot to Bali, to go to the nice cafes, to have a coffee, be at co-working, at every, at every place you're always gonna see a few guys with laptops. We're gonna head right now into Changu because I also have to extend uh, the monthly rental for the scooter. It's hot. hot. <laughs> scooter rentals this is the one i got it from local place but they genuinely got some of the best prices so like regular scooters what is this like scoopies so guys we're at another place where i'm spending quite a good bunch of money fruits veggies and honestly it's one of the most affordable places in the world to get high quality fruit like i'm crazy about the dragon fruit right now so on my schedule is always like three four dragon fruits a day mangoes passion fruit watermelon. we go crazy about the watermelon and i have to tell you some fruits like the watermelon is like you can get a watermelon for around like one dollar fifty two dollars depending on how big or small it is they're like medium size here dragon fruits depending where you go really nice ones you can get like two for around a euro maybe a little bit over a dollar one for like so guys this was the little fruit haul all of that was sixty thousand rupiah pretty much four dollars And another thing that I've been really trying to do as much as possible, just go out and walk. Be it right now for sunset. Guys, Bali is probably one of the most famous places for its sunsets almost every evening unless it's like super cloudy. And just go out, collect your steps. Got this little watch. I'm not sure if I mention it, but like tracking right now. My steps, my weight.
guys, good morning from the parking lot of the gym. It's not just the gym, it's the gym. That's the name of the gym I've been going to for now, close to a month. So I'm gonna take you up, I'm gonna show you around a little bit. It has been absolutely amazing to have a morning routine like that right now, like waking up 5.30, 6, maybe 6.30 and just making my way up here. They're open at 6 a.m. and usually that's also like, you know, the emptiest time, so. So guys, the next point for today. A few months, maybe you can get away tourist visa, visa runs, but if you want to stay longer, like me, at least three months, or at this time it was close to six months, um, like right now, I think five months in Indonesia, you need to get a special visa. And it's fairly easy, actually. It's called a B211 visa, and actually right now we're in front of our visa place. We're just gonna come pick up our passports because it's the last time. The guys there have been actually really nice, and especially in terms of the convenience, like a lot of people like to do visa runs when they're in countries like that. So, you know, you have to fly out for 30 euro, come back, round about the same, but you know, so in, in most countries, especially in Southeast Asia, there's opportunities like that. But if you come to Bali, I'll link them below. It's like loading, huh? It's loading. <laughs> so guys, we came out of the visa place and because it's fairly close to, what is the name of the mall? Uh, Beach Walk. How do you like it? Uh, it's so cool. It's, I think it's the coolest uh, mall I've ever been. Really? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's like completely yeah. like open area. You have the garden, you have this like, uh, uh, how do you call this, sun deck. Yeah, yeah, we're on a bit of a sun deck. Let's walk over here. <laughs> guys, the thing is a lot of people who come to Bali, they believe Bali is just a very like island village. And actually, if you're gonna be in places like Changu and in between, honestly, there is absolutely nothing. There's like no, like, let's say, commercial store. But if you're gonna go into Seminyak, if you're gonna go into Kuta, like the real, real Bali, like they have everything here. Like Zara, H&M, Bershka, it's like Cinema. a- Oh yeah, movie theater, exactly. When we're talking about the cost of living, movie theater, how much was it? It was like- 45. Exactly, it was 45,000. Three dollars for, we watched the new Ghostbusters, which, bit of a movie really recommendation. Good. It was pretty good. So yeah, if you're in Bali and you're looking for a mall, this place is really nice also for a walk. It's called Beach Walk and I would say the reason for that is it's right by the beach. And uh, yeah, in terms of free time activities like movie theater and things like that, Let me take you for a bit of a weekend trip, extended weekend trip to one of my favorite places in the Bali area, Nusa Penida. So this very likely might be one of the sickest places in all of Indonesia. We just made it to, it's still the Bali area, it's the neighboring island by the name of Nusa Penida, just here from the balcony. We're seeing actually two small neighboring islands, Nusa Cheningan and Nusa Lembongan. Actually pretty, pretty, pretty nice and small, so I absolutely love the scenery here. We're seeing a lighthouse. It just, a lot of boats. It's like Driving a proper boat. movie set. Yeah. So we're staying at a place that is called the Adiwana Varnakali. It's a bit of a tongue breaker, but so I would say for today, the plan is to go to one of the most epic beaches. I don't think it's going to be an overstatement. Are you ready for this? Yes. Well, that's the whole biggest reason why I want to be in Nusa Penida because this dragon island. First, I would say, let me quickly show you around a little bit where we're staying. I'm getting a tour. Me? Yeah. Sure. Guys, first of all, we're staying a humongous Wagner right here and, uh, and over here, that's the 
ocean. No, actually, I have a huge, huge mountain, but they always disappear in the morning, so you gotta wake up really early. And now we come to the bedroom. Uh, this is their suite, so it's a very fairly large uh, room, and we got a big, nice working table right here. Come inside, we got a huge, like, kind of like a walk in uh, closet, bathroom. It's very nice and very clean. Can we go to the beach? We can. So guys, we made it to one of, at this one probably, most famous beaches in the world. So this place is called Kling King Beach. Every time people try to remember it, it's usually like Kling Kling. Blah, 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 blah. That was also me, but I think at this point, we're gonna memorize it in the long term. And you know, actually some memories are coming up. I was here for the first time, I think in late 2017 or 18, the first and only time. And you know, with every country, if you, if you have traveled a little bit, if you've been to a few places, you always kind of like, have memories of who you have been, what your goals were, and you know, last time when I was here, it was kind of like a little bit of a dream to to be traveling, to be living around the world, to be maybe making a living out of kind of like some flashbacks overall this place. I mean, if you have been here once, these are visuals. Definitely one of the most unique places in the world. Super blue beach, super pure white sand. Actually, last time I haven't made it down. And last time it was crazy, but it's actually quite funny. It's a little bit of a group dynamic. So all the people that are here are pretty much there at the entrance. There's also like some like, you know, some like food, some stalls, so you can get a juice. So fairly touristically developed. And maybe good news for everyone who wants to come here. People get hurt a lot when they come here. It's like the roads used to be pretty much non-existent, huge potholes, and you hear all the time people falling. But I think they redone, they have like redone, maybe not all the roads, but pretty much all the way here. I remember last time it was extremely bumpy. So the roads are much better now. And uh, you know, the whole island is more developed. I think tourism here, like maybe 10 years ago was much, much lower, even like when I was here three years ago. And I have to tell you, like if you come to the front, honestly, it's a little bit like, you know, it's, it's a very- Crowded, loud. It's very noisy. crowded, loud. Monkeys are stealing everyone's cookies, which is kind of entertaining. <laughs> I'm recording this, you know. <laughs> but if you walk further down here, it's unbelievable because here is like literally no one. It's super, super peaceful. You have this like unbelievable view, and there's literally no one. All even to though, yourself. even though there's like 300 people in the front. So I think tomorrow we're gonna come in the morning. I mean, I guess if you want to get like exactly the same shot as you see it on Instagram, you probably have to stand in line there. There's like literally a line for the photo. But yeah guys, let's go to the second stop for today. I think it's called Broken Beach. Never been there before. We're kicking off Monday. All right. How are you feeling today, my man? Hi. Eh? Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the way he stands. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Open. 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 Long <laughs> this one's very common, so yeah, I'll take one. Yeah, I'll take one. So, guys. 
it's part of tourism on Usa Penida. When the spot is really good, like really special, people know it. <laughs> but seriously, tourism is a fascinating phenomenon. It's like the whole island, pretty much every cliff is absolutely amazing, beautiful. But like in most places, the way tourism works is like, you know, there's a popularized place, there's a popular spot, and there's all the tours bringing everyone to literally one spot. And I have no idea what people are looking at. I think it's just like hot spring type of thing. Okay. It looks muddy. Gas station. <laughs> I have the scooter back there. I'll bring back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh. Huh? Uh, just okay. drop you for the. Can we all come in? Of course. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hop on. Here's some coming. Oh uh. shit. There's our bag. Yeah. You asked me like what if we run out of gas? Well this. What's this? That looks like the water in the ocean. Yeah, that's probably what it is. <laughs> Guys, made it back. Oh. Let's back on. Made it back for sunset. And the staff here told we're really, really lucky. We have a super clear sunset, especially right now it's the rainy season. You see the mountain of Bali, the volcano, absolutely amazing. And uh, actually, yeah, it was definitely an adventure today, the ride. So we ran out of gas on the middle of the street. Kind of should have seen the comments. And then there was uh, these guys on the side of the road, they helped us out. But uh, yeah, so sitting down here, having some dinner, going for some pizza. I think it's Western food first time in like months. Yeah. In a long time. Usually we go like, you know, Indonesian food. Super nice burger, pizza. And um, yeah, we've just been shooting here some photos, a little bit of video. The life has been absolutely amazing. I'm looking very much forward to tomorrow because so far I've done the one part of Nusa Penida that I know. I think we're gonna show up again in the early morning, but there's still a few more places that I've seen online. I'm really excited to see. Gonna take you along tomorrow morning. in Bali you have to do this Balinese massage uh, we woke up at 5 today and you know as always we explored a lot drive around especially like under this temperature it's so hot so I'm really happy and looking forward let's go check it out spa at the Adiwana it's right by the ocean so looks like 250k per person uh -huh. oh. <gasps> okay guys looks like the spa is downstairs with ocean view those are the rooms over there we're having some nice and cold tea uh -huh. 
Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's go. This guy inside. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the spa. And they give us this, like, one time <laughs> underwear. Danny refused to wear it. <laughs> My underwear is see through enough. <laughs> Yeah, I would say like the best part of this spa room is we have the view of the ocean. This is so pretty. Baby, my writing is so bad. Yeah, like, good. why? Oh. So as of right now, we're waiting for lunch. It's 4 p.m. and then we'll see. I think we're gonna head out again for sunset. There's a few more spots definitely to see around here. So I always want to stay honest with you. Like, the hotel is amazing, staying here, the whole island is probably one of my favorite places in the world in terms of the scenery. But, you have to keep in mind, some of the places, it's up to you. If you feel like it's worth visiting, for me, honestly, I probably like don't see any reason for me to go back there. But just any random cliff on the island is just, you know, absolutely amazing. So, just to give a heads up to you. We wanted to leave the hotel around 3 p.m. and go to a place that is called Diamond Beach, which is definitely another huge highlight, so make sure to stick around if you're still with me here right now. But last minute, it was getting, it was getting late. We would have gone there, like gotten there close to sunset. So a buddy of mine on Instagram sent me a message with this little tip for the Amok Sunset Cafe. And I have to say, it's probably one of the most epic sunset places ever, kind of like in the fashion of the nature that you see here. This is one of the other very famous islands. I think this is Nusa... Um, Cheningan, not quite sure, there's Nusa Cheningan and Lembongan, which we also see from the hotel back there. But honestly, from here, the view absolutely sick. We're gonna enjoy the sunset, maybe crack, crack a cold beer. Um, tropical glamping so it's kind of like a house it's an Airbnb on top of the cliff on the very edge of it I mean let's just turn around I'm gonna show you the, the heart of this whole place honestly when I saw this place online I was like yeah I'm sure I'm sure this is an angle type of thing I'm sure this is like when all the Instagrammers arrive and they get the sick shots and then you arrive it's like nah, it's actually not not that not that crazy not that scary but honestly guys this there's like literally two meters and then there's just cliff just falling off so it's still safe like don't be scared uh, somebody's coming oh no i'm not coming guys it's still fine but guys i'm scared of height all the time but here i'm completely it's stuck. it's like two three meters still but then the cliff just goes down it's absolutely amazing so you wake up you come out and you have this cliff view one of my favorite places in bali has been uluwatu and the view there and this looks very similar just for the difference that we have a house on here so let me just give you a quick tour actually they have two houses they're hosting us for two days so um later on i'm going to show you the other one as well Sleeping area, really nice. Uh, I was like, we're like in the Truman Show, you know, like with Jim Carrey when he like opens the doors and it's just like fake worlds, like a scenery. So here we are literally like, is it visible in the camera right now with just a shot? Yeah, you can see. This is crazy. It's absolutely <laughs> crazy. So, like shower, come, let's go up again. Oh no. You want to show this? Yes, yes, yes. This is after you warmed up from the beginning. You have another nice. You have to open this door. Can well, I see? Well, I'll show them. I'll sh <laughs> they see. They see. <laughs> It's art! Let's go. We checked in, Bianca was like, yeah, yeah, they look good, nice shape. Okay. Uh, 
So again, this is the island of Nusa Penida. It's like a 15-20 minute ride on a speedboat or there's also ferries going from like different ports in Bali. So it's actually fairly easy to get here and we are right now at the Diamond Beach. So I think I'm also going to show you Diamond Beach later on but uh, yeah, I mean just staying here the one night. Usually I feel like one night is not enough. In any place I've ever stayed, I've always felt like one night is not enough. It just feels rushed. It feels like it's not really worth it even if the place is super sick. Right? Do you agree? Mm -hmm. But this place, I'm like, honestly, one night here, you get like impressions enough within a few hours. Which is so open. You see the ships in the background and everything. So this for me, honestly, definitely is in the top five places I've ever stayed. Just because of how unique it is and just the scenery. It's like you come to one of these viewpoints where you're just like, wow, this is one of the most amazing places ever. And then you build a house there. So that's kind of like how you can imagine it. So yeah, we're going to walk out. Actually, right now we stay one night here. We're going to be moving to the other house. I'm going to show you around there real quick as well. It's kind of like a little bit more of an open space. I don't know how much I'll be filming around the houses here today. I think this Airbnb goes for around 100 euro. I'll link to a link below. Not cheap, but like, you know, this is like the price where in the Western world, like whatever, in Europe and like the US, you would pay that amount of money just to stay in a mid-range hotel. And here you can just have like, you know, just like bucket list experiences. Yeah. So that's kind of like what we're looking at. Yeah, I see. I like this. Yes, yes, take it, take it. Yes, yes, take it. so lucky with the weather it's rainy season it has been raining almost every day every day here we're frying on a scooter so in the morning we drove out passed by the clinking beach in the morning literally until 9 a.m. there's not a single soul unless you count the monkey souls which you know, maybe you should there's a lot of them actually in the morning they're a bit more aggressive than during the day morning grumpy but guys and we made it I just got a shot absolutely amazing we're here by the diamond beach I would say in terms of the visuals it's an absolute highlight once again it's tuesday morning it's really really busy so whenever you're going to come here my biggest recommendation is probably going to be stay overnight so you can come out to these places at 6 7 a.m and then it's probably going to be really nice and calm enjoy the shots this place really in the top 10 probably of all time of five years of travel in terms of how it looks incredible Finally made it down to this place that is called the Diamond Beach of Nusa Penida. I would guess it's called Diamond Beach because of these formations that do, you could say, look like diamonds. But honestly, in the tradition of uh, my frequent video titles, I did not expect this. Now, for real, guys, I've been to a lot of nice beaches, and I love, I love a good beach. But at the end of the day, it's all about kind of like. Does it feel like an adventure? Does it feel like a process to get down there? And also, what is the vibe? And here, this is definitely one of the most amazing beaches in the whole world. I'm, I'm making no exaggerations. And the amazing thing is, it is kind of hard to get down. Not super hard, but you get a little bit out of breath. And the thing is, most people come here with tours. Most people come here for a bit of a day trip. So we are literally right now the only people. And there's a lot of tourists on the stairs. Like there's hundreds of people actually upstairs. I mean, they're not hundreds, but dozens for sure. And guys, so really, 
unexpected, extremely nice surprise. This, is, this beach is absolutely amazing. For swimming, maybe a little bit dangerous. It's gonna go a little bit, not too far, but the sand is just so pure and yeah, guys, pure nature, purely just, I don't know, just being in a place like that as always. Just kind of like, I'm in the moment, but at the same time, I'm also in the future where I'm like, hey, I wanna, I wanna, on the one side, help people to experience things like that, but in the first priority, also kind of like, you know, I just see myself taking my sister here, taking my mom here, I'm walking down the stairs, and I like to mention these things, just because it's kind of like things that go through my mind, and like, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm a good guy, or whatever, but no, it just motivates me also to share it. Bianca is a little bit burned out from the day, but gave her an apple, so we're all good now, guys. Definitely get out there, we got a world to see. And so we are leaving Nusa Penida, almost kind of like hard to leave. Look at this crystal clear blue water. <sighs> Was a good time, good time. So we're gonna hop on the boat, it's gonna be 20 minutes back to Bali. I'm drunk again. So guys, hope you enjoyed this little movie, this little documentary about my life in Bali. It has been an amazing time. As of right now, I'm coming to you from Thailand. And honestly, if you're new here by any chance, what I do on the channel is I document my life about living around the world. I call it perpetual travel or it's known as such. And Honestly, if you're watching this right now and you're just planning to do a little trip or I mean, honestly, if you watch all the way until the end, you probably have heard about this idea of, hey, going somewhere and living there for some time, living remotely, working remotely, be it building your own thing, your own business or being striking a remote job. What I can tell you is the more I am on the road, the more I start to realize how much opportunity there is out there, not just in terms of cost of living, like the reality is depending on where you are right now, you can live a so-so life for $2,000 in any Western country, or you can live a fantastic life for the same amount in a selected few hand of countries where sometimes like you can just get so much more. So that is just the financial aspect. The other aspect is just living an exciting life, being surrounded by nature, having the opportunity and freedom to work from where you are, work how much you want, build your own thing, or position yourself in a in a place where you just can feel good about yourself. Um, I'm not saying everybody needs to do their own thing or become like, oh, whatever, all an entrepreneur, or whatever the thing right now is. But I think there's a lot of opportunity. It's becoming bigger. And I think right now is really a golden time for 
remote working, remote living. And I hope this video inspired you a little bit too. Bali, I would say, is a great place. It's super safe. It's super developed. It's honestly, you're not going to leave your comfort zone too much out there being in Bali. Be careful on the scooters. I'm telling you that. Be careful with the monkeys and monkey force. They might come after you. Don't tell me I didn't warn you. But other than that, the biggest danger in Bali is to get stuck there a little bit because people really love it. People get really comfortable. You meet a lot of like-minded people. And that's, that's, that's an honest warning. Like, be careful. Some people get sucked into Bali for years and it's like <laughs> there's like a bunch of memes on the internet about Bali and the Bali life but uh, there is a reason why it's so popular a lot of people just re really find a community there and I would say it's a great starting point to dip your toes a little bit into this type of life and um, yeah if you're interested to know more about uh, who I am and what I do, you're welcome to join me on Instagram and check the back catalog of the last five years of travel. Whenever I finish a trip, I like to put together a video where I summarize the whole experience. This is the one for a Bali. So if you enjoyed it, this is always the usual, the thumbs up and uh, you know what to do. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Bali, your thoughts on um, whether or not you just plan to travel there, you plan to stay there for a few months. I would be really too cur curious to hear from you guys. And on that note, you too got a world to see. For the past few years, I've been documenting my life here around perpetual travel and living around the world. And as of now, you're watching country number 51, Indonesia. We're going to be traveling all throughout Java Island, the known places, Bali, and maybe also some hidden gems. Just documenting my life around building a life remotely around... <laughs> All right, let's finish this up here.